Amen. Welcome all. Hello, hello. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, hello to you all. Welcome to the Hour of Visitation, episode number 35. I am your host, Dr. Etienne Graves, Jr., and we have a very, very special guest today. I'm going to give him a proper introduction in just a few seconds, um, but if you hadn't, haven't seen him before or don't know about him, I suggest that you go to his website, sonsofgodembassy.com, and check, them, check him out and see the first time he was on our show. Blew it away. Um, people are still amazed by it. Woo, amazed. Amen. Powerful. So you guys need to check that out. Um, to, today's message, of course, is about the blood. And I have the author of The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven, Apostle Lee Robinson. I'm going to, like I said, give him a um, proper introduction in just a minute. But I want to say greetings to all of you. Hello, hello. Shabbat shalom. Happy Sabbath to you. This is the day that the Lord has blessed and sanctified. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to give you time to join. This is going to be a mighty, mighty day. How you guys doing out there? I, I know some of you probably are hungry. <laughs> Glory to God, we've been on our fast. I'm hungry too, but I'm hungry earth for the word. Glory to God. You're getting ready to eat a meal, a spiritual meal, and you can go have you a meal after that for this fast. Glory to God. Hello, hello to you all out there. Niana, L. Lockett, Tammy Atkinson, my moderator, are you set apart? Hello to you. True Cook, Jackie M., Robert Duarte, Peter, my brother, hello to you. Pamela, Kenyatta Mosley, Douglas, Jam, Red One 2021, Pops, Shabbat Shalom, Jen Unrau, Andy Rodriguez, Felisa, Posh Hippie, Crystal, Terry Oleski, Oloski, and Randy, hello to both of you. Dolores, Yahweh Ra, hello, greetings. God bless you. Terry Huang, Deborah McDonald, COVID 2020, Lady M, Sari C, hello to you, glory to God. Sky Blue, LC, Laura Hunter, Megan, hello, Megan, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Megan from um, Sons of God Embassy, glory to God. I appreciate it. She, she blessed me with the, with the recording last week. I, and he blessed me too. They treated me so, so wonderfully. I'm sure you guys are going to treat him the same way today. Glory to God. Hello, hello, voice. Glory to God, John Flaherty, Peter, Dor um, Peter Dorte, Vicky Marley, Rwanda, hello to you and Jeffrey, God bless you, Yosemite Sam, Kelly, hello Kelly, Kelly Mahoney, Lisa C, Dr. Feelgood, um, Eileen, Am, Conqueror, Carolyn Nelson, glory to God, okay, you guys, if you guys come on, I'm going to have to say hello to you in just a little while because we're going to get started, but hello, Lori Went, glory to God. Glory in, glory to God. And they all say, hello, Apostle Lee. We, we love yeah. you. We're looking forward to this. Say, God morning, Shabbat Shalom. They all say hello to you. Glory to God. I want to say all to you, to you all, thank you for all of your donations and gifts and letters and encouragements and prayers and for buying the books, my books, his books, and for all the love and support. We do appreciate yeah. you. We thank God for you. I want to say also, um, if you want to um, see more about Apostle Lee, you can go to his website, sonsofgodembassy.com. And if you would like to donate to, the, to him, which I encourage you to do, my moderator is going to be putting his information throughout the show, all throughout. She's going to put his information, how you can give on certain um, 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 cash app and PayPal, how you can go to his website, how you can go purchase his books. It's going to be all throughout the live chat. It's not about me. This show is about Apostle Lee. So if you want to bless me today or like you usually do, turn it around and give it to Apostle Lee today. Bless him. I appreciate the thought in your heart. Thank you. I and you will be blessed for that. But I'm asking you, bless him instead of me today, okay? I really do appreciate if you do that. God will bless you for that. So it's going to be all throughout, all throughout. She'll continue to put it over and over. I've asked her not to put any information about me because it's not about me. I want to bless the man of God. So make sure you look for that, okay? Um, I want to mention the person who brought us together. Um, she is the lady who emailed Apostle Lee um, about the broadcast that I did when I was talking about him. And we both have been trying to find out who she is so we can um, bless her and thank God for her. And she finally e emailed me and I found out who she was. So I want to just tell her, thank you. Amen. Um,
Just a second, you guys. I got it set aside, but I'm, we're going to make sure we give her her props. We have to, because without her, this this probably wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. Praise God. Okay, I don't want to waste any more time. What I'll do is I'll look for it while we while um doing the show and I. I promise you, I will give you, I will speak your name and give you your process at the end of the show, but I'm not going to forget, but I don't want to waste, you know, any time, but I promise you, I will, I will give you your props. Thank you to our moderator. All you set apart. Thank God for her. We thank God for all of you who are here. You're not here by accident. You're here on purpose. God has a special word for you today, special, special um, assignment for you today, a special release for you today from the man of God. So I only ask all the time when you come in, please respect the anointing. Um, respect the, the the Holy Spirit, what he has to say. Respect our guest, very powerful, special guest, a, good, a friend of mine. And if you want to put in the chat about, well, another pastor has this word or this teaching, or there's a good teaching over there, not on the live chat. Okay, we're going to respect the anointing. We're going to respect the man of God. And you can hear two or three words that will change the trajectory of your whole life, your whole week. That's so right. pay attention pay, and give respect and honor and do. Okay, that's, that's, that's all I ask. Otherwise, this is a wonderful live chat. The spirit of love and camaraderie. They encourage each other, pray for each other, love on each other, encourage the man of God, give them amens and emojis. That's what it's all about. Because it's like a congregation, even though we're not together, that's what it's all about. So if this is your first time, that's what you can expect in this live chat. Also, at the end on every Saturday, we take communion. So if you want to get your elements prepared, at the end of the show, we're going to take communion. And hopefully, Apostle will join us again, as he did last time. We show up so appreciated. And what I do every show is I blow the shofar at the from the instructions of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to blow the shofar. I'm going to pray. Then I'm going to introduce the man of God. We're going to shoot the breeze for a couple of seconds. Then you're going to get ready to have the blood blow you away. <laughs> All right. So let's blow this so far now. Let's go, angels. You know what to do. You're loosed and released. Satan is song. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and pray and go before the throne right now. So let's get let's get in a, a, a spirit of agreement. Praise God. So Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for this seventh day that you blessed and sanctified and set apart. We ask you to come and rest with us today as we rest with you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We bow down to you and give you reverence. Um, our King, your majesty, your highness. We just love you and you're so faithful and mighty. We just thank you, God, and we bless you. I ask you, Father God, right now to bless every single person that's watching, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you that they're not here by accident. I thank you that everything that, they, that, that they've asked you for or the need that they need to be met will be answered today in the overflow. Holy Spirit, have your way. This is your show. We decrease as you increase. Have your way. We ask you, blood of Jesus, to have your way. Anoint my friend. Anoint him in a mighty way. Blood of Jesus, cover him. Pour out over him. Thank you for that right now. Thank you for the, the purpose that, 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 Father God, that you have put in his mouth to speak. It will go forth and will not return until you void in the name of Jesus. Thank you for power going forth. And we thank you for your presence, Father God. And while your presence is here, the power is available to heal, deliver, set free, whatever the people need, whatever they need. And I thank you, Father God, that after this is over, even from this, Father, that you bless the man of God and his wife, Father, in, in, in ways that they never even thought or dreamed possible. We just give you glory and honor, Father God. Thank you for loosening your heavenly angels all around this show, all around the people's homes and their phones and computers and jobs or cars or wherever they're watching that for protecting this word to keep the devil from stealing it away we just give you glory and honor father let it bring forth fruit and results and let us never be the same again we love you father god we bless you in jesus mighty matchless name we pray amen all right amen glory to god you guys i'm excited you guys gotta get excited this this, this is it we we didn't fast for nothing we, we passed <laughs> expectation why, yeah. why are you fasting we're fasting because we're we're, we're crucifying the flesh that's what it does. It silences the, the flesh so you can hear in the spirit. That's, that's what that does. And we're in expectation. So I want to introduce the mighty, mighty man of God who came on here last time and just blew us away. It was so, so amazing. Um, there's a mighty, brilliant, um, trans, not trans, um, unique 
revelatory anointing on this man of God for these last days and for these end times. So I would suggest that you open your ears, open your eyes, pay attention, get your notebooks out, take notes, glory to God, and receive, receive. If there's any unforgiveness in your heart, let it go now. You're not going to be able to receive that way. Let it go now. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and introduce the man of God. I'm going to read his bio. Apostle Lee C. Robinson is a best-selling author of the divine revelation of Jesus Christ, unveiling the mystery of Christ. Apostle Robinson has the heart of the father for the emerging generation. He impacts the lives of many through his prayers, prophetic insight, and wisdom. He is known for his teaching and preaching the word of God. He also moves in great revelation of the spirit of God. He has been sent to raise up sons of God to equip and train them for their God-given assignment. He is truly fulfilling the call on his life by uncovering the gifts that lie within many. Apostle Robinson walks in wisdom beyond his years and with a humble heart he reaches many lost souls for the kingdom of God. His first love is evangelistic work, but God has used him in various offices and giftings when needed to breathe life in and on those who have lost the very essence of life. God has anointed Apostle Robinson with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he goes about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for truly God is with him. He serves as apostle of the Sons of God Embassy in Jacksonville, Florida. He currently operates under the, under the covering of his spiritual father, Apostle Francis Miles of Francis Miles International Ministries. Apostle Robinson is happily married to Prophetess April Robinson, the love of his life, and they reside in Orange Port Park, Florida. Here's the book. This is the book. This is the golden book. Get this book. I got it. And you got it already? Get it, to, get it to somebody else. Get it for a gift, birthday gift, Father's Day gift, Christmas gift, whatever y'all, you know, whatever. Get it for them, okay? Glory to God. So welcome to the show. We love you. Welcome back, Apostle. Amen. How are you this morning? Amen. Wonderful. Praise God. I am, I am on top of the world. It's a beautiful view. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I wanted to ask you, um, have you, is, is there, what's like the greatest or the most, mighty testimony that you've gotten maybe since you've been on our show or even since you've been talking about the blood is there a testimony that you can share with us to get people's faith up and get them encouraged yeah there's there's quite a few um uh, we just i just received one sunday i was doing a, a, a teaching and as you know according to hebrews 12 and, tw and, and, and 24 uh it says and jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkling of the blood that speaketh better things than that of Abel. One of the things that the blood has done in, in the mountain last year, June, was taught me that, that it continues to speak. Yeah. So Sunday I was doing a message and in the middle of the message, the blood started telling me, I am giving y'all authority to walk the bloodline. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus walked the bloodline. Jesus walked the bloodline. So he was saying that it was giving us the authority to walk the bloodline. And so Sunday I began to, and it, healing began to explode in the building. And so there was a woman that called in and asked for prayer. Now I didn't know what was going on with her. And, and so, and, and I was praying for her. She called me uh, went, uh, Thursday night, called me Thursday night. She's in Hawaii. She said when she called in and asked for prayer, she said there was a huge knot inside of her and that knot was just turning. Mm. And she said, as you plead the blood of Jesus, the knot began to unravel and the knot is no longer found in her body. She said she went looking for the knot and cannot find the knot. No well in Jesus' oh. mighty name. Ooh. Glory to God. Mm. Yes. These are the things that we are seeing and hearing and witnessing. Another one that stands out to me is the, the young lady, she bought the book and she began to fellowship with the blood. And she said that as she fellowship, she said her whole room turned red. She said, as the room began to turn red, she says she saw the floor 
start coming up like water, but she realized it wasn't water, it was blood. Now, here's the most powerful thing, Dr. Gray. She said her husband left her. And she said, as the blood began to fill the room, she said the blood stopped on top of the bed. And she said that the blood, as the blood began to decrease, the blood said, the blood said to her, she said, it was the first time she heard the voice of the blood. She said, the blood says, all has been made whole. <laughs> Two days, the husband returned to the house in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the <laughs> blood, the blood is doing tremendous things. The blood is just doing tremendous things as we Go further into the blood, fellowship into the blood. And this is what I'm, I'm, I'm screaming to my people. But this is what blessed me, Dr. Gray. This was Wednesday night. My spiritual son, when I was in the mountain, day 18, if you read my book, you'll see day 18 is when the blood came into the house. It's when the blood overshadowed me. I have never felt anything like it before in my life. I fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I fellowship with the Father. I fellowship with the Son. But when the blood came upon me, day 18, the, 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 the announcement of the blood that hit my body just transfused everything in me. Wednesday night, I was talking about the impartation of the blood. And my spiritual son was impacted. Couldn't talk, couldn't, couldn't get it out. Now, my sister is married to him. She said his whole body was pure red, Dr. Gray. <laughs> he was drunk. He was drunk for two days in the blood. These oh. are the things that's getting ready to hit the body of Christ. Mm. These are Come the on, things about to hit our neighborhood. These are the mm. things about to hit the streets, the schools. Glory to God. See, we don't have a demon problem. We have a fellowship problem. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, I can feel the anointing already off of that. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Are you guys Are you guys getting that out? Is, is, is your faith being pumped up? Are, are, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the <laughs> word of God. You, you're hearing this. Get, this should be having your faith. Yeah, okay. I want to receive like a, like a catcher at home plate. Okay, Lord. Ready, blood. Bring it to yes. me. Bring it to me. Be ready. Yes. Be ready. Woo, that's exciting. I can't wait for what God's going to do with this. And I, I, I want to get you get you started, but I want to say this too to the people and get your input. You and I are planning um, an Age of the Blood conference. Yes. And it's going to take place July 17th and 18th in Dallas, Texas. We're still getting the, the exact address and all this, all those things together. We're still getting all that wrinkled out, but it's going to happen on that date. And it's going to be powerful because it's going to be a revival of not just the spirit, but it's going to be revival of the blood. And I'm yes. looking forward to it. I want to thank Kelly Mahoney for all she's doing. And I wanted to know, um, I mean, I know that the people, I mentioned to the people on my show on, um, I think, Tuesday. Oh, they are so excited. They are so excited. I don't know, if, you, if you're not in Texas and you, and you can get to Texas, get there. It's going to be life changing. Glory to God. That's what the, it's going to be life changing. Yes. What, are you, what are your thoughts about it, um, Apostle? Yes, I, I'll tell you what I'm seeing, uh, Dr. Gray. As we, as God has teamed us up together, your, your people, my people, and all that, that come, mm -hmm. what is going to happen at this conference is you guys going to receive a powerful impartation of the blood. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's called the age of the blood is because we need to understand the age. If we're going to maximize the power of God, the power of the Son, the power of the Word, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the blood, we must understand the age. Mm. A lot of people don't understand the age. What the blood is going to do, the blood is going to bring us to a place where we maximize the age and see the full power of the Father and the Word of God in the earth. So I, I am convinced that those that come and those that come hungry, those that come thirsty, the blood is going to impact you and the blood is going to impregnate you to carry the very presence of the blood itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Woo! And I made a mistake. It's not the 17th and 18th, it's the 16th and 17th. 
Friday and yes. Saturday. So it's the 16th and 17th, Friday and Saturday. So I apologize for that, you guys, 16th and 17th. And uh, um, what the Lord showed me too as well, um, age of blood. This is three words, age of blood, three letters, A-O-B. And you know what the blood told me? There are only three types of blood types, A, O, and B. Come on, <laughs> come on. Wow, wow. Like, what the world? That was on the fact, it blew me away. I was like, so, okay, this is, this is God. I was like, I had to look it up and make sure, okay, A positive, B positive, oh, that's it. A, O, that's and right. B, age of blood. Only, only, wow. God, only God, only God, only God. <laughs> oh, guys, to laugh at that because that's so funny. But that just shows you, God, this is right on. This is right on heaven's heaven's agenda. And I believe not only will it be attended by many on earth, but all of heaven is going to be there. Yeah, they got their tickets. <laughs> yes, come on now, come on. Now. Okay, all right, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna let them go. I'm gonna be quiet. We're gonna receive. Let's give the man of God respect. Glory to God. And let's um, make sure you encourage them as well. And just be, in, be in, 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 in tune and be, be um, you have your ears open. Be ready to receive glory to God, okay? All right, Apostle, have your way. I love you, brother. Amen. Love you too. Amen. God bless everyone, wherever you are. We do honor Dr. Grace. Come on, let's, let's honor this mighty man of God. Let's honor him. Thank him for what God is doing in his life and how he's bringing the mind of God in the body of Christ and in the earth. So we do honor you today, Dr. Graves, and we greet you. My wife and I, sons of God, embassy, we greet you. We greet your people in Jesus' mighty name. We do honor all of you that are here today. I'm so excited today. I'm going to uh, release a word uh, that uh, actually started in the mountain and the blood. As you, as you read the book, many of you that have the book, I want to encourage you to, to not only just do 30 days, but remain in that fellowship. Because there's a, there's a power in that fellowship. And so the blood is still speaking to me. In fact, uh, 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 I, I, I have become extremely close to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he and I, over the course of the years, have been walking with him, have seen and heard many things. And uh, now that I have this encounter with the blood, I am hearing the blood more than I'm hearing the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. And so the blood keeps speaking, according to Hebrews 12 and 24, it says that and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood, which speaketh better things than that of Abel. Speaking, E-T-H, means on a continual basis. So I want to encourage you to stay in that fellowship in Jesus' mighty name. But today, glory to God, I want to pray real briefly, and I want to ask the blood. I'm going to come in agreement with the blood because the blood has already done some things today. We're just going to unpack them and you're going to possess them. I'm going to say that again. The blood has already done some things. We're just going to unpack them and you're going to receive them in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you right now and I bless you. I bless you for Dr. Graves. I bless you for his moderator. I bless you for, for everyone that's connected to him. And I thank you for those that sacrificed the 25 hours. And I thank you today, Lord, according to the law of sacrifice, there's a reward. And now today is that reward. The blood shall reward those that have sacrificed and fasted to prepare and prep for reception. I thank you now, according to the law of the blood, we have legal right to receive the origin of a thing. So therefore today, let the origin of all things now become a portion of the reception. I now take the blood and I plead it over the airways. And I take authority over the mountain of media. And I say, now you must bow to the blood and to the carrier, Jesus Christ himself. And those that are not connected to that name be re ready to receive without any interruption. We cast down, drive away every dark spirit, witchcraft, sorcery, hexes, vexes, incantation. We come against the, the spirit of religion. We cast down tradition of man that will cause the power of God and the power of the blood to be none of faith. And now we position ourselves, blood of Jesus. We come in agreement with your voice now and your purpose and your release. We say now, pour out upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Okay, today, 
I'm going to talk to you about the blood, the final fellowship. The blood, the final fellowship. Glory to God. And so uh, on day 13, I was in the mountain. And if you don't know my testimony, last year of June, I was called to the mountains. And I was in the mountain of Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. I was surrounded by red rock mountains, red everywhere. It was a moment that God set in place to announce something and bring something from heaven to earth. And so whenever God get ready to do something, he will always give you an image of something. He will always give you the image of it because sometimes images impregnate a person without even speaking. And so, uh, so God gave me the image of everything around me was red. The mountains was red. The dust was red. And so one of the days I was there, on the second day, the spirit of the Lord came in the valley and the spirit of the Lord asked me, he said, how did I make man? And I said, for the dust. He said, exactly. And so he began, now this is very powerful because to understand this, we must go to Revelation 13 and eight. Everything about the power of this blood, the revelation of hinges on Revelation 13 and eight. So he said to me, he said, how did I make man? And I said, from the dust of the ground. He said, exactly. And then he said, he said, and then he caused the winds to blow through the valley. And I saw dust moving across and I saw this red dust moving across across the valley and I got this image of God catching the dust and the Bible says in Genesis God Genesis chapter 2 it said that God the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril now this is very powerful he breathed into his nostril not his mouth you see isn't it fascinating that he breathed in the nostril and not the mouth well, the reason being is because your mouth is used for multiple things, but your nostril is used primarily for breathing. So what God was prophesying was that you will always breathe in my breath, my life, my essence. Uh, are, you, are you hearing me? So hmm. this is the making of man. Hmm. So then God said to me, look at Revelation 13 and 8. So I looked at Revelation 13 and 8. It says, of all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that, 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 that belongs to the lamb. He says, he says, now watch this. It's very powerful. He said, who was slaughtered before the world was made. Now, he, now the lamb was slaughtered before the world was made. And this when God began to bring this revelation into me. He says, son. He said, before the earth came, before the star, before the moon, before the sky, before the water, before the trees, before everything, the lamb was slain, which means that the blood was slain before the world was made. Mm. And so then the dust that I caught is the residue of the blood. Now, this mm. is very powerful because you must catch this revelation. Mm. And so he breathed into the nostril and man became a living soul. At that moment, Adam, watch this, this is why he said that the blood is the final fellowship. When we enter into, the church is entered into the final fellowship. And I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. Now, why? Because he breathed into that red dust and that man who he breathed in became a living soul. Now watch this image. That means that Adam external was the blood. Then Adam internal was the DNA of God. So man's original makeup, his external was the blood and his internal, he had the DNA of God himself. That means that Adam blood type was God. Everything that ran through his vein was the blood of God, and everything outside of Adam was the blood. This is why when Paul started writing in Romans 13 and 4, he said, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what he said. He said, return to the external of what Adam dropped in the garden. This is very powerful. And so how do we get that? We get that through fellowship. Because Adam, watch this, Adam was in fellowship with God. So what, what, what Lucifer did was broke up the fellowship. When, when Adam and Eve sinned, iniquity stopped the fellowship. So mm. Adam couldn't mature mm. into the God that God wanted him to be in the earth. 
So his fellowship was broke up. So now what God is showing us now is that I'm releasing the blood of Jesus. I'm bringing the blood back to the body of Christ. And I'm causing, I'm calling for the body to return to that fellowship that was interrupted in the garden. That fellowship that was interrupted in the garden so I can give you what he didn't get in the garden so that you can have what he didn't have in the garden and you can possess that and change the world and have the world look like what the garden was looking like. Glory to God. Isn't that powerful? So what God is doing now through the blood. Well, now, how do I come up with this? Because Isaiah 46 and 10 says, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Now, listen to this. That are not yet done. Did you hear that? This is the prophet. He says, now watch this. You got to hear this. This is very powerful. He said, declaring the end from the beginning. And from the ancient times, the things are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will not and I will do my pleasure. So the prophet is telling us. That if you want to know how the end going to be, look at the beginning. Because the end is declared from the beginning. So in other words, if Adam was born in the blood, if Adam was formed in the blood, and Adam received the DNA in God, this is what our image shall be in the coming days. And that's why... The blood said to me on day 13, the blood said this to me. I was in the in fellowship. I was fellowship with the blood. And the blood said, stop, I want to say something to you. And I said, yes, blood. And the blood said this words to me. It was very, very powerful. The blood walked up to me and the blood said these words to me and shook me. The blood says, I'm not here to talk to you about what you have done. Now, this is very powerful. Look what the blood said to me. The blood says, I'm not here to talk about what you have done, mm -hmm. but rather I'm here to reveal to you what I have done. This is powerful. Mm -hmm. So the blood mm -hmm. says, I'm not here to discuss what you have done. I'm here to reveal to you what I have done. Mm -hmm. So this is why Isaiah 46 and 10 is so important because it said the things that are not yet done so there are some things that Adam and Eve never got done. You, so everybody's crying about this great revival that's getting ready to come. Everybody's looking for this powerful revival coming. There is no revival coming until the blood of Jesus returns to its primary place in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Why do I say that? Because Hebrews 9 and 14 says this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, now, look at this. So that means that when Jesus went back to God, he went back spotless. He went back without a blemish. He went back without a wrinkle. Now, look what Jesus said. Jesus said it in Ephesians that he may present her, the church, to himself. A glorious church not having spot or blemish or any such thing, but that she should be holy, glory to God, and without blemish. What does that mean? That means if the spots and blemishes are on the body of Christ, how does it move? How does it get out of the way? How does it get off of the body of Christ? Titus said that things have crept in unaware, which have caused spots and blemishes. You see what I'm saying? In the body of Christ, there are false doctrines. Are you hear what I'm saying? That's a spot. Are you hear what I'm saying? They are trying to change the way the body of Christ is formed. You see what I'm saying? That is a blemish. See, a blemish is something that changes what God form you to be. But a spot is something that stops you from receiving the character of God. My God, hallelujah. So in other words, there are things that's in the body of Christ that are that, that, that have spot and blemishes. So how do we get rid of the blood? The blood, because I'm, hallelujah. How many hear what I'm saying? Because in Ephesians 9 and 20, I mean, say Hebrews 9 and 22, it says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with the blood. Oh, my God, did you hear that? The law requires that nearly Ooh. everything be cleansed Ooh. with the blood. 
So oh this is why I'm saying the blood is the final fellowship. This is why God saved you for this age. That's why we got to understand the age. That's why we must take, maximize the age. He born, he calls you to be born in this age. Think about this now. When he needed a king, in the age of the king, he had David born. When he needed a prophet in the age of a prophet, he had Samuel born. My God. When he needed a leader to be born to lead his people, he had Moses born. My God. And so now he saved the last, the best for last. He saved you and I. He knew that we would be faced with the darkest time. He knew that we would be faced with the most religious set. He knew that we would be faced with the greatest spirit that is opposed to church, the Antichrist. But he knew that he had a weapon that was shared before the world was. And he knew that you was going to be born in this age. And he said, I'm counting on you to understand this age. Yes. I'm counting on you to understand the weapons I put what in this age. Glory to God. In every age, there's a man or woman that rise up with great power and authority. Yeah. But watch this. The power is available for everybody, but everybody doesn't stand out. See, mm -hmm. fellowship separates you from mediocre and causes you to walk in that which is called uncommon. Hallelujah. Remember when the age of the Holy Spirit came? Remember when John G. Lake, remember these great men of God? Remember William G. J. C. Moore? Remember Catherine Kuhlman? Remember Smith Wigglesworth? Glory to God. Why did these men and women stood out? Why did McPherson stood out? Because they fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And when they fellowship with the Holy Spirit, they separate themselves from those that are mediocre and I'm calling on to you today I'm crying out to you that are watching this program today I'm calling for you to fellowship with the blood the blood said to me in the mountain the blood said to me I'm not calling for you to just just have the revelation of me I'm calling for you to have the fellowship in me and I said what and the blood said to me this is what I'm getting ready to do. In Daniel 11 and 20, 32, it said, and such shall do wickedly against, against the covenant, shall be corrupt. But by flatteries, look at that, by what? Flatteries. But the people, the, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. The word know there comes from the Hebrew word where you get fellowship. Fellowship is the Hebrew word, which means intimacy. So in other words, what's going to separate us, what's going to separate you, is your fellowship of the blood. How you fellowship, because see, fellowship brings you to a place where the blood can cancel the voices that's trying to alter your destiny. I'm going to say that again. Fellowship with the blood brings you to a place where the blood counsels the voices that's trying to alter your destiny. And see, Adam and God fellowship was interrupted in the garden. That means that there's some things that's undone. But you can't do it unless you have what he possessed in the beginning. So what was that he had in the beginning? This is very powerful. Watch this. this. Watch this. I want you to follow me. Watch this. So Revelation 13 and 8, right? It said that the lamb was slain before the foundation. That means that the blood had already impacted the earth. Is that right? Now I'm going to show you a pattern here. And this is how you know we are stepping into the final fellowship. And this is why we must understand the age. Revelation 13 and 8 said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. Is that right? So now we got the blood already established. Is that right? <laughs> Glory to God. Get ready, sons. Get ready. Get ready, sons of God. I'm calling all of you sons of God. That's right. All of you are sons of God, whether male or female. We are all sons of God. You are either in Adam or you are in Christ. <laughs> Technically, there's only two men that will walk the earth. I'm going to say that again. I know that frightens you. I'm going to say it again. Technically, there's only been two men walk the earth. Adam and Jesus. You either in Adam or you in Christ. 
You can't be in between. I know that they taught you that purgatory. Purgatory is not real. You either in Christ Jesus or you in Adam. Adam is the fallen state, but Jesus is the risen state. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lamb of God. Watch this now. So you got the blood has already been shed. Is that right? So that means that the blood was already there. So technically, saints, when you read Genesis, when God said, when God said, let us make man, he was even talking to the blood. Oh, my God, isn't that powerful? Let me say that again. I know that many of you was taught that he's talking to the Holy Spirit, the word and Jesus and all that. But they left out the blood because the blood was shed before Adam even showed up. So when he said, let us make man, he's even referring to the blood because now the blood has clothed him. See, what fellowship does, what fellowship does and what prayer don't do, fellowship clothed you. Prayer calls entrance. Fellowship calls clothing. Prayer calls license for God to come into earth. But fellowship calls God to clothe you for the earth. Oh, I'm going to say that again. My God. Did you hear that? See, in fellowship, you get clothed. Prayer gives God legal right to enter the earth. My God. Glory to God. Now, watch the pattern of God. This is very powerful. So now the blood is already waiting. But watch what God does in Genesis chapter number one, verse two. It says, in the earth without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God hovered. Did you see that? So before God even introduces the age, the blood is there and the spirit is there. Oh, my God, did you catch that? So before he introduced the age, the blood is there and the spirit is there. And the, the spirit of the Lord was hovering over earth. And then Genesis, God and God said, and when God spoke, the blood and the spirit came together and created. Oh, glory. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Mm. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because if we, if we don't understand, this is the beginning. Remember, declaring the end from the beginning. So in, in, in Genesis chapter number one, when you go read it, go, 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 go study Revelation 13 and 8, you'll see that the blood was shed before the foundation. Then you'll see in Genesis 1 and 2, you'll see a pattern starting when God get ready to, to start an age. You see that the blood and the spirit was there. Now watch this, let's fast forward. My God, hallelujah. Because see, we got the age. See, Adam and Eve is the age of innocence. Are, are you with me? They're the age of what? innocence they was in the garden they was innocent they was innocent my god and let me show you the power of fellowship see as long as adam stayed in fellowship he talked like god he performed like god he did what god would do and god says now watch this when he's in fellowship what would god do this is the law of fellowship this is how you know you in the law of fellowship because you will call what god would call it without god even saying it in the earth let me explain. And the Bible said, and God brought all the animals before Adam. And Adam called it giraffe. He called it elephant. Called glory to God. He called it pig. He called it, he named the, uh, the birds. He named all of them. It's so powerful right now. We still naming the birds what Adam called it. But notice that God didn't even double check it or even change it or even say anything. Why? Because when you're in fellowship with God, you will always say what God already said and you announce it in the earth. Now earth must now birth what God said and trust you to announce. Once you announce it, it remains there and can't change, neither can the devil change it, neither can the devil alter it, it must remain the same because the law of fellowship says I speak what God has already now performed. Mm. Oh, God. This is the power of fellowship. Mm. This is why I said that his fellowship was broke up. His fellowship was disturbed. Adam and Eve fellowship was disturbed. Glory to God. And I want to scare you today. I want to frighten you because you're about to enter into the depth of that fellowship. You're about to look what it look what, look what, look what Isaiah said in 46 and 10. He says, 
things are not yet done. That means that it's in you to unlock what God has already done in eternity. He's waiting for somebody in the earth that's in fellowship to pronounce it so earth can obey it. Earth will never birth anything that you don't get in fellowship with God. I'm going to say that again. Earth has no legal right to uncover nothing that God never done. <laughs> if God haven't done it, then earth can't do it. If God haven't agreed on it, earth can't do it. So your fellowship puts you in direct line with God and you do just like Adam. You call the thing what God has already called it. My God, isn't that powerful? That's why that's oh. why I'm saying today that the blood is the final fellowship because inside the blood, God put everything in the blood when he needed time. He pulled time out of blood. Are you hear what I'm saying? When he needed a savior, he pulled it out of the blood. Glory to God. When he needed a king, he pulled it out of the blood. Glory to God. When he needed trees, he pulled it out of the blood. You see, he took everything in the blood and the blood says, I'm waiting for somebody to have that same mindset, that same mentality and understand that the same DNA that's in, in Jesus Christ is in me because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is quickening my mortal body. My God. And the only thing I need to do is get in fellowship with the blood so that the blood can begin to speak to me and begin to give me instruction and begin to guide me and begin to say things that the Holy Spirit will not say. Let me explain what I'm saying. Ooh. My God, let me show you what I'm saying here because there's a pattern. Okay, now watch Genesis. You see, Genesis before before the earth came, what was shed? The blood. So the earth, the blood is already here, and then the spirit is hovering. So before God get ready to do an age, the blood and the spirit comes together and then give birth to that age. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In John, watch this, in John. <laughs> in John, my Lord, I love Jesus. I love him. In John, watch this, it's a very powerful. John 19, verse 34, it says, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now, What's there? John 19. Is that right? Now, I'm going to ask you a very simple, simple question. I'm a very simple preacher. I like to keep things simple. I don't want to be deep. I ain't trying to be deep. I just keep things simple so that you understand what God is saying. Now, in Genesis chapter number one, what was hovering? The spirit. But before the spirit was hovering, what was shed? The blood. So the blood proceeded the spirit. Oh, God. The blood what? Proceeded what? The spirit. So yes. the blood, John 19. The blood came out. Woo, God is about to birth an age. But he came. the blood is waiting. Then Acts chapter 2, guess what happened? The Holy Spirit invaded the earth. Now you got what? The blood and the spirit. Now he's about to give birth to an age. Woo! My God. He's about to give birth to what? An age. 19, John. Acts oh. chapter 2, the Holy Spirit. Now you got the blood before the Holy Spirit came. Mm. So now you see this? Are you Who's seeing this? You see this? So see. the blood mm. proceeded mm. the Holy Spirit. Mm. So any of you was taught that this is the age of the Holy Spirit. I'm not coming against that. That's true. But you forgot another force. You forgot another voice. You forgot another character. You forgot another nature. You forgot another life. Mm -hmm. And that's the blood. Now the Holy Spirit and the blood now, and God is now birthing a new generation. And that birthing comes from our fellowship. And that's why God said, declaring the end from the beginning. So now he said to me, the blood said to me, he says, listen, you are entering the final fellowship. And I said, what do you mean? He said, the final fellowship is upon you. He said, before Jesus come back, the church must be spotless. Is that right? I said, yes. He said, exactly. He said, now I need you to begin to fellowship with the blood and the blood will begin to remove the spots and blemishes in your life. And as it moves the spot and blemishes in your life, I can begin to download more eternity in you. I'm going to say that again. The mm. more spots and blemishes move from us, the more we can get pregnant with eternity and we exit time.
and we get pregnant with eternity, we come back to time, change time to look like eternity. This is why Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Watch this. Where? On earth, as it is in heaven. In mm -hmm. other words, the demand for us is to make earth look like heaven, not get caught in a rapture. Mm. Uh-oh. 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 Don't mess with the rapture, people. Why are you leaving when you the answer to the problems? <laughs> Unpack your bags. Glory to God. And get in fellowship with the blood. Watch it. The blood cancels the voice. The blood cancels the voice of the iniquity that broke up the fellowship. See, iniquity broke the fellowship of God the Father and Adam. Why, how do I know? Because the moment, watch this, it's very powerful. Because you get in trouble with fellowship and you get out of trouble with fellowship. They were fellowshipping with Lucifer. Who was Lucifer at the time? He was iniquity. Isaiah described him as iniquity. When he fell from grace, when he fell from authority, when he fell from heaven, he's now iniquity. So they are talking to iniquity. They are fellowshipping with iniquity. See, because iniquity changes what God said. Iniquity alters what God said about something. God said, don't, don't, don't consume that tree. Iniquity made the tree change. That's what iniquity does. It alters what God says stay away from. It, it, it changes the view of that thing and make it become good. Now watch this. This is very powerful because once, once they fellowship with, with Lucifer, which is iniquity, the fellowship, now they are pregnant with it. They are pregnant with it. Now they have changed the internal DNA. The DNA now is altered. And I was in the mountain and the blood said to me, God didn't put him out so much because he's seeing. And this shook me. He shook me, shook me family. The blood said this to me. God didn't put him out so much because he's seeing, but put him out because he came from up under the blood. With Adam and Eve sin, they came from up under the blood. They came from the blood covenant. And God couldn't have that in the garden because the garden is what? Eternal. So he can't have that which is time invading or polluting eternal. So because you lost what caused you to be eternal, the blood. Woo! My God, hallelujah. Because he came from under that which is eternal. I can't keep you here. So it wasn't so much, that's why the blood said to me, I'm not here to talk about what you have done. I come to reveal to you what I have done. See the blood, you have to understand, the blood, to, the way the blood sees it, the blood says, listen, uh, listen, I can wash away your sins, but I'd rather for you to have the God life where you won't be tempted of sin. Hallelujah. You see, if we have God life, see, why? Because God is not tempted, neither can he tempt any man. Well, so if, if we have, my God, if we get pregnant with this fellowship, if we get pregnant with that DNA, if we get pregnant with being clothed in the blood, temptation will lose its power over us. And then we can now make earth look like heaven. And don't tell me it ain't coming because it's coming. Because John says, I saw, I saw. Look what John said. I saw coming down out of God. CK. John said, I saw coming down out of God. It was coming what? Down. Come on. That, we weren't going up. It was coming down. That means that there's a generation that's about to emerge. And I believe some of you on this line with us today, you, there's a generation about to emerge. And we're going to say, look, I'm not going to heaven to be happy. I'm bringing what's inside of God down here. 
And what ain't like, what's not like down here gonna be invaded with God when I put it down. We all gonna be getting ready to walk in, 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 this, in this agreement. We get ready to walk into this fellowship. How do we get it? The blood does it. The blood does it. The blood removes everything that is defiled. It removes the spots. It removes the blemishes. It removes the, the wrinkles. And now we can see what, what, what's in God coming down out of God. John said, I, I saw it coming down out of God. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. My God, only thing that can make it new is the blood. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 10 and 19, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. My God, everything that's unholy here, the only way it gets holy is by the blood. And there's a group of people, there is a, there is a, there is a train of people that's getting ready to understand that we are entering into the final fellowship. And that final fellowship is the blood. How do I know? Because Revelation 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the blood of the lamb, my God, that means that there is some people waiting to be unleashed. And the only way we be unleashed, look at this now, because if, if God began it with the blood and the spirit, he has to end it with the blood and the spirit. It is the final fellowship. It is the final announcement. It is the final birthing. It is the final power. It is the final authority. Authority. My God, it is yes. the blood and yes. the spirit. It is the age that we are about to maximize in Jesus' mighty name. Let me show you this. And I, I, I want to show you this. This is very powerful. John 20, verse 22. Now, let me show these are These are all in the word of God. In Genesis, God breathed into his nostril. Is that right? He breathed into his nostril. Watch this. God, God always show us what we don't always see. Watch John 20 and verse 22. This is Jesus. He's about to depart. And when he has said this, he breathed. <laughs> He breathed on them. It's the same breath that's found in Genesis. Now watch this, because this way the text becomes confusing to people. And he said to this, and he breathed on them, and he says to them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's in John. But the Holy Spirit then falls to ask. So what was he doing? He was giving man what he dropped in the garden, the breath the life to receive God. What's about to happen to you? Every time a revelation comes of this magnitude, every time God gives a revelation, he's breathing on man. He's breathing on man. He's, he, see, the word breathe there, one of the definitions that's from there, that's in Greek, oh, I love it. It means to reactivate. <laughs> Glory to God. To reactivate. So in John 20, 22, he reactivated man. He reactivated us. And that's what we at right now, sons. That's where we are right now. God is reactivating us. And that's why many of you right now, something is turning on the inside of you right now. You recognize this is something that I've been waiting for. This is something I've been looking for. This makes sense. This is who I am. Yes, because he saved you for the, this age. He calls you to be born in this age. He calls you to get this revelation, to hear this revelation. Why? Because he knows that once you get linked into this and once you start fellowshipping with the blood once you start crying out and start fellowshipping with the blood you'll start separating yourself and you'll start moving away and you'll start now inheriting the life of God and you'll begin to walk in the very essence and nature and character of Jesus Christ himself and you'll walk in that same power that same authority and when you move the power of fellowship is found in you and in your movement Fellowship speaks of how you value God's presence. Your fellowship 
speaks of how you value God's presence. Let me show you a good image of fellowship. Let me show you how powerful fellowship is. Fellowship is so powerful. The Bible says that when Peter came out of the upper room, when he came out of the upper room, the Bible said that he was so, he was so in fellowship with the Holy Spirit that the Bible said, and his shadow healed people. They was they were putting sick people, rolling sick people, just so his shadow can hit him. That's the depth of fellowship. Let me show you another one. Paul, the apostle Paul, he was fellowshipping with God so much that the, the, the spirit of God was coming out of his pores. And the Bible said he put handkerchiefs and aprons against his skin. See, the fellowship, see, that's what fellowship does. Fellowship impregnates you with whoever you fellowshipping with. So if you fellowship with the blood, my God, what are you about to carry? What is this age about to carry? What are you about to release? What are you about to unlock? Who are you about to heal? Who are you about to set free? Who are you about to bring into the presence of him that live forever? It is your fellowship that God is looking for. That's why he said the blood is the final fellowship of this age. And I'm gonna leave you with hmm. this. I'm gonna leave you with this. That's why we need to understand the difference. I'm gonna leave you with this because I want you to understand something. The blood function and the Holy Spirit function. Yes, they are one, but they function. You must understand they function. The blood cleanses you while the Holy Spirit purifies you. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The blood cleanses you, but the Holy Spirit purifies you. What do I mean by purify? Purify means the final stage you go before you are presented. Who glory to God. This is why when, when, a, when, when a civil master, when he, when he purifies his civil, you see, when the civil is ready, he turns the heat up seven times and he, he heats the civil seven times and he stirs it. But he can't present the civil until he see the image inside that civil. Once he see the image inside that civil, then he can present that civil and say that civil is ready. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit. Now, now purifies you, his fire. See, Jesus said that you should be baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. See, 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 there's power, then there's purification. But you can't purify something that's unclean. That's where the blood comes in. See, the blood cleanses us so that the Holy Spirit can purify us and then God will see his image in us and then the Holy Spirit can present us. Hallelujah! God, so, hallelujah. God. Mm. Mm. So that's why we must understand the age. And that's why we are being brought to this fellowship. See, once you fellowship, then the blood will begin to speak to you. And then he'll say, let's move this spot. Let's move this spot. Let's move this blemish. Glory to God. And then when those things are moved, then the fire can purify. And then he can present us as in the twinkling of an eye. Today. I come to introduce you the blood, the final fellowship. You are entering the final fellowship, which is the blood, before Jesus can come back. He's not coming back. According to Ephesians 5, 27, he said that he might present to her, to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or blemish. So how do those spot and blemishes move? The blood, not the Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost's job to move the spot and blemish it. It's the blood. The blood removes the spot and blemishes. The Holy Spirit teaches you, instructs you, guides you. Hello, brings you gifts of the Spirit. But it's not his job to cleanse you. And let me let me say something. <laughs> let me say something. When I was when I wrote this book, I had I had a, uh, a theologian contact me and said that the book challenged him and said, you know, I, I, I was challenged by what you said. And I said, what was that? You said that the Holy Spirit won't convict us. I said, exactly. Because convict is a legal term. It means you're guilty. 
That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said he could convict the world of sin. He would convict the world of sin. And many of us said it. I don't know many of you said it as well. I said it too, growing, you know, coming up in, in my walk with God. I said, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I was about to do something. The Holy Spirit convicted me. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit won't convict believers. The Holy Spirit will correct believers. He will convict unsaved people, but he'll correct righteous people. Hallelujah. Because he can't convict wow. you. Because convict means you're guilty. Right. <laughs> that means that him and the blood is fighting. The blood says you 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 free. The blood right. says your sin washed away. And but the but the Holy Spirit is saying you're convicted. Which one is it? You can't have both. They can't be fighting against each other. The Holy Spirit can't say you guilty and the blood saying you innocent. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Goodness. The blood says you're innocent. And the Holy Spirit agrees. The Holy Spirit will correct you, but the Holy Spirit won't convict you. In this age, we must unleash them or fellowship with them so that we can be empowered by them so that we can change the course of the body of Christ. And I'm going to leave this with you. The blood said to me, I'm counting on this generation to fellowship with me so that I can remove the spot and blemishes so that the glory can fall on my body. The blood said to me in the mountain, the glory can't come because there are too many spots and blemishes in the body. This is why the blood is the final fellowship. Glory to God. I want to pray in Jesus name. Blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, right now, that every home, every vehicle is being impacted right now, wherever they are. I now bring every address under the authority of the blood. And because the blood can reach, and because the blood can heal, and because the blood can cleanse, and because the blood can redeem, touch right now. every sickness, disease, go in Jesus' name. I'm seeing, I'm seeing many of you about to have personal visitation and visions about to come. The blood says, I'm about to give many of you visions. Many of you about to have personal visions. And the blood is about to unlock. I, the, the blood is telling me that many of you are about to be unlocked. Many of you are about to see and touch and behold things that the generation never possessed. The blood says this is the hour of possession. This is the hour of possession and the hour of multiplication, says the blood. Ready yourself, for I am coming to your home. I am coming to your lineage. I am coming to your family. I am coming to your ministry. I am coming to your marriage. I am coming to your body. I am coming to your mind. I am coming to your psyche. And it shall cease. Torments shall cease. Sickness shall cease. For I am he that was shed on Calvary, but released before time began. I am he that put things in order by the voice of him that created all things. I am he that is released in the earth to cleanse it for his arrival. I am he that raises up that which is dead and give life again to it. I am the blood of your savior. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, you guys out there. I know you felt that. That's what the Ooh. fast was for. That's what that was for. Did you receive it? Did you receive it? Come on now. Come on now. Did you receive that? Praise <laughs> God. Praise God. Let's give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. That anointing is still here. Didn't I tell you guys about the man of God? Who's your first time? Those of you who knew the first, you already knew it was coming. But for your first time, now you know. And what should you be doing now? Getting this book. Getting it. Yes. 
My malware is put in the website on, on the live chat how you can get the book. Go to Amazon, go to his website, sonsofgodembassy.com. Get this book. It's necessary. You say, well, Dr. Grace, I got the book already. Get another one. Get it for somebody's birthday. Get it for, for Father's Day. Get it, get it for a uh, uh, graduation. Get it. Pass them out. Give it to somebody on the street. Get, get these. These are gifts. These are jewels. Buy this book. Get it. It will change your life. You know, Amen. I don't have people on my show. Just I don't do you. You know, if you've been following me for the nine months, almost nine months, I don't have. He's my only guest. So if he's on here, then it's, then then it's it's important because I always the Holy Spirit only have me put people on my show that are genuine. Glory to God, and that the anointing for this time and this man of God is that man. The blood. Get this book. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. But don't just get it. Put what you're learning here into practice. Yeah, I'm gonna get the book. Okay, that was a good book. You put it down. No, yeah. no. Get you a highlighter, highlight some things, get you a bookmark, underline some things, and then go back through it and then follow the prayers. Take that 30 day, do it and watch yeah. your life change. He talked about the testimonies that he's received, but I'm receiving testimonies from people on my show that when he came on here and got the book from what's going on. So get this book. It's the time, it's now. The, if you can feel that anointing, I don't know what, you know, but maybe <laughs> because you need to get, get the blood in your life, get some fellowship. <laughs> That's why we fasted so we can get that anointing and feel that. I know you guys felt that out there. Get this book. All of my people, get this book. You watch this on the replay, get this book. And also, bless the man of God. This, when you get information or revelation that you've never heard before, um, you should bless the man of God for that. Not that you're paying for information or you're paying for revelation. No, right. and I told you. I don't. I I agree with um with, with Apostle, but I've been, I've been teaching that for the longest. It's the order of Melchizedek. You don't give to get. That's the wrong order. Tithing is, I'm a, they say, well, give this. You want to get this healing. You want to get this miracle. Give a thousand dollars. Give it, give it, give it. And you get it. No. The order of Melchizedek is he's, he blesses you, then you give out of your That's heart. That's right. That's how it works. You don't give to get. Come he on. gives you, then you give out of, out, of, out, of, out of joy, out of happiness. That's how it works. So bless the man of God. Bless the man of God. I, I appreciate you all who think about me. I appreciate all of your donations. But today I ask you, not, not me today, not me. Please bless the man of God if you can. Bless, I never ask for donations for myself, but I'm asking for them for the man of God. This is powerful information. Get it. Get the book. Get the book. Powerful. Thank you, man of God. And I want to tell you when you were talking, I know that you're labeled as apostle, um, but I see a crown on you. There's a crown Amen. and it's dripping. Amen. You know what is dripping, right? Yeah, <laughs> you Come know what's dripping. All oh, yeah, you know what? It, yeah, it's yeah. dripping. You know what is dripping off that crown. So that's what wow. I see. So I don't know Amen. if you're going from apostle to king and priest, or I don't know. I just it's greater than the apostle. Wow, that's what I see. I see that. Yeah, God. Praise God. crown with blood. Like you know how it says when um we have not resisted unto blood like Jesus did when he sweat yeah. blood. It's like wow. it looks like from what I'm seeing. It looks like you're sweating blood, but you're not. You know, it's the crown from the crown. It's just wow. You know, that was one of my favorite scriptures for a long time. Mm. Mm. Wow. wow. Yeah, that was one of my favorite scriptures for a long time. So powerful. Oh, my goodness. And you know what else? The Lord was, was reminded me of this. And I looked this up while you were talking. And I remember, I think, one of the, um, Sari C., one of the person, um, um, my um, stenographer, she sent me this um, reminder that May 26th is the super blood moon. Now, you know, every year there's blood moons in this net, yeah. but the Lord told, well, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get that. The blood told me that this super blood moon is called a super blood moon. I think the only one this year. It's wow. prophetic. It's prophetic. It's, Come on. It's, it's the coming of not just what's, what the, the blood is doing, but our age of blood conference. It's the preface to that. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the Clear another way. It's that's coming first. It's a sign in Acts two and Joel two. He says about pouring out his spirit, but he mentions blood and fire. He mentions the moon being turned to blood. We know what he's talking about a great and terrible day when that happens, the last day. But this moon turning to blood is a sign. Is a sign because what he's going to do at that conference, he's going to pour out that blood. That's right. But this super blood moon is no yeah. accident. When you that's add right. the numbers up, May 26, twenty twenty one. Guess what you get? Eighteen. Oh, is that an accident? Is that a coincidence? Wow. Now, Come on. When, you, when you add the numbers up, May 26, 2 plus 6 is 8. New beginning, circumcised, cut off, new yeah. thing. This super blood moon of all the others in history 
is a prophetic sign of the blood being poured out over the heavens all the way down to the earth. I just wow. Say, Glory to God. Wow. Glory to God. Come yes. on. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> That's it. You know, there have been a whole bunch of them. There have been people write books about, but this one, this year, I don't know about all the other ones, this one in a couple of weeks, next week, or we, prophetic, prophetic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Super yes, it is. blood, not a blood yes. moon, but a super blood moon. That's right. Get That's right. You. Get ready. Get ready. Woo! Glory to God. Well, do you want to um, lead us in a, in a communion, Apostle? Would you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, let me tell let me, everybody, um, get your, for, for those of you mine. who are just watching, and the, you, you know, let you're just still mine, trying to pick stuff off the floor, get your, let get me your, mine. okay, go ahead, go ahead. You guys that are just watching, and don't, we take communion every Saturday for Sabbath day. I'm going to have my very special guest needed today, so get your communion, get your elements, get your, your body, glory to God, and get your, get your blood, glory to, glory to God, get it ready while he's getting his. Wasn't that a powerful message? Bless the man of God. Come on, you bless the man of God if you can. Bless him. Bless him. Anything you can. Bless him. Glory to God. We receive it. Get that book. Get that book. Pass them out. I pro you know, if you get the book and pass it out, even for people who don't believe or don't believe in about the blood or maybe not believers, get that book. I'm believing that there's an anointing that's going to cause them to want to read that book. Unbelievers, yeah. you get the book for them. They're gonna. I don't want to. I don't want that book, but put it on the table. Let it sit there for a day or two or a week. I promise you, the blood is going <laughs> to encourage them. They're going to pick that book up there and not going to be able to put it down. So you got to get it. Get it for them. Well, they won't. They won't want that book. Buy it as a gift. We're doing new things, Lord to God. New Lord. things. And you know what, Pastor? I want to say this really quickly because I thank God for your revelation, the fellowship of the blood. It's a powerful revelation that I'm walking in and I'm hearing things from the blood that I've never, you know, thought I would even hear from the blood before. So I thank yeah. God for you and that revelation. But what I'm learning about this is, you know, I'm going to ask you about this too before we get into this. Um, this whole thing with this LGBTQ, this homosexuality, this, right. this lesbianism and, 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 and um, trans, all this, this homosexuality. And there are parents who have children who are homosexuals and lesbians. Um, right. There are people who have family members who are homosexuals and lesbians. And um, many, many of them who are homosexual and lesbians had things happen to them, like they were molested when they were children That's or right. raped. They were innocent. That's but right. what I am believing at that this new revelation because they say, I tried, I tried everything. I prayed, I, I fasted, I prayed in tongues, I cried out, nothing's happened. But have you tried to plead the blood over them right. while having a relationship with the blood? Right. Something new. What do, you, what do you think about that, Apostle? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why this fellowship is so important. Because like what you bought, there, there, are, there are four ways that a person enters into homosexuality. Okay? They're born into it. That's the iniquity. Mm -hmm. That's Psalm 51. David said, I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a teaching on this because the church was fighting saying you can't be born that way. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a mm -hmm. difference. I didn't say they were sent that way. Mm -hmm. I said it was born that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. God didn't send them that way. But once you come into this world, mm -hmm. you are born. David said, I was born in sin, shaping, shaping in iniquity. Mm -hmm. So, so there's iniquity, the, the, the strongest iniquity on the wall of your mother, when you come through that wall, that, that's the iniquity that shaped you, mm. okay? So they can be iniquity, they molested or raped, like what you said, okay? Then the other one is experimenting, mm. okay? People experiment with sexual, different things like that. And then the fourth one is uh, individual that's so angry, they be going out with opposite sex, but every time they went out, they got their, they, their heart was broken over and over, and they get so sick of mm. the opposite sex that they tried the other sex. Those are the four ways that individual, okay? All four are destroyed by the blood. Mm. All four. Okay? All four are destroyed by the blood. But all four are destroyed differently by the blood. Right, right, right. Um, because I've had, you know, men come to me and want to get free. One man is free right now, married and in Texas. Glory to God. 
You see, so I've had my wife and I minister. We we minister many people in that area. So they must be educated on it. You see, and like you said, then the blood. The blood destroys all four, mm. but it doesn't destroy all four the same way. Mm. Mm. You see, and that's, see, that's see, the blood says something to me. The blood said to me the reason why the origin is so important with me, because everything that's born out of iniquity is an insult. Of God's beginning. Mm. Wow. That's probably right there down. Mm. That's true. You mm. see, anything that's born out of iniquity is an insult to God's beginning of a thing. Mm. That's why the blood takes us back to the origin. That's mm. why this fellowship is so important. That's why I'm saying to people, you know, the 30 days are beautiful, but don't stop there. Fellowship with the blood because there's things that the blood want to do in your lineage that will never repeat itself. Mm. Glory to God. So powerful. That's why I wanted to ask you the question. I knew you have a powerful answer. So anybody yeah. out there who's watching this or knows somebody who has um, a family member or a child in that condition? Yeah. And we've yeah, seen it. We've we seen Dr. Gray. We've seen people, my wife and I, we 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 minister to people, even in our home. And, and that's what people don't understand. Because each one has to be approached different. You can't, and you know this yourself, Dr. Gray. Every deliverance is not the same. Right. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit say, okay, no, no, don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's why when it comes to that, like you're saying, but the blood would destroy all four ways. And that's why the fellowship of the blood is so important. That's why I'm saying it's the final fellowship. Because he can't come back to a church with spots, with blemishes. It must be spotless like he presented himself to the Father. The church must be the same way. Glory to God. Wow. So, 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 man of God, the things that people have been trying to get, get rid of and for 30 years, 15 years, uh, two, 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 two years, they, they can't get rid of, they can't stop a sin, they can't stop, they can't, they, they, they have been able to, it's a habit, it's something that just can't stop. Well, now, if they yep. have relationship with the blood, it can be broken. It can, and it'll show it. I had an experience with the blood. There was something I was, oh, kept repeating in my life. And one, one night, the blood took me on a journey, mm. showed me the root of it, <laughs> and uprooted. Oh, wow. I love that. I love That's that. Why, see, everybody must understand fellowship. When you understand fellowship, because the church, in, and, and I hate to say this, but in the totality of the church, the church doesn't teach fellowship. See, that's what we got away from. We gotten away from fellowship. And that's why we got so many people sick in the church, depressed in the church, divorce, high rate, all these things. That, you see, why? Because we gotten away from fellowship. Mm -hmm. See, remember, whatever you fellowship with now empowers you. Mm. Mm. So yes, whatever you struggle, but listen, and I want to tell your audience, please hear me as an uh, as an apostle in the earth. Don't put a timetable on your deliverance. Mm, that's good. That's the good. moment you put a timetable on it, you're going to always be disappointed when it don't appear. Mm. Don't put a timetable. Just show up for fellowship. Trust the blood. That's what the blood said to me in the mountain, Dr. Gray. The blood said to me, trust me. <laughs> so be patient because some of this stuff that we collected it's not going to just go away I don't care what nobody tell you they lying if they think listen there's some things you stop right away but there's some stuff okay because deliverance ain't always immediate deliverance sometimes you know it's, 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 it, it requires your appearance over and over and over but don't give up. Trust right. the blood. Trust the blood. Right. And the blood shall do it. Oh, God. Oh, that's powerful. My goodness. Okay. Well, let's, I don't, let me see. Do I have any, is it, are there any other questions? I don't want to flood them with so many questions because this is an anointing here. I just want to just go on into the, um, wow. 
Praise God. But most of these questions is already he's already answered on the teaching or in the book. So I just want to just go ahead and flow into the into the into the anointing. And I tell you, when you get a, get the revelation that of the blood and the fellowshipping with the blood, you take communion entirely different. It's yeah. different. It's That's not right. just okay. Let me do okay. I'm out. No, it's yeah. it's different. It's because someone's there with you taking it. That's it's, it's, yeah. it's powerful. But but I'm gonna let you go ahead and have it. I'm I'm gonna let you take the lead on this man of God. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, just, just lift them up before the Father. Oh, Father, we thank you now if we enter into communion, which is the highest level of fellowship, where we offer the temple back to you and all gifting that you put in the temple. We realize that this temple and all gifting that you put in it cannot be completed without the body and the blood. Today, we enter now to that, that final fellowship the fellowship of the blood, blood and the fellowship of the body. As we consume it, we recognize that we become that which we consume. We lift now the body before you. We ask for the same blessing that you released upon Jesus that faithfulness. Place it upon this body now. We acknowledge that the suffering of that body, the resurrection of that body now becomes a part of us as we consume it. As we break it now, we acknowledge we are ready to be broken by your spirit, served by your hand, and received by the hunger. In Jesus' name, amen. Consume it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I lift the blood before the Father. The Father, I thank you that your life is in this blood. And we acknowledge today that when Jesus was bleeding on the cross, it was not a mere man. It was God bleeding. Yes. Yes. As we consume your blood, any sickness, disease in our body leaves immediately. Yes. And we accept the DNA yes. that was altered in the God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Consume it. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blow for that. Yes. Woo, that was a good one there, huh? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I got it now. Her name is Kimmy Lunsford. Kimmy Lunsford is the one that sent the email to Apostle Lee about the show I did um, mentioning him. So she is the reason, well, God is the reason, of course, but he used her and her obedience to connect us. So thank you, Kimmy Lunsford. You are more than appreciated. And I pray and hope that you can make it to the conference in Texas. We, I know I would love to meet you, and I'm sure maybe Apostle would love to meet you too Amen. as well. So hopefully Amen. you can make it there. Praise God. Um, all of you out there, I hope you enjoyed this show. I'm going to give, give you some more information real quick. If you want to see any more information or find out about more of his products, you can go to Apostle Lee Robinson's website at sonsofgodembassy.com. That's sons, plural, of God embassy, E-M-B-A-S-S-Y.com. It's in the live chat, and it'll be also in the description. If you would like to bless the man of God, which I highly encourage, because I'm going to bless him too, you can do so at cash app and it's his um you can do so at dollar sign robertson 22 that's dollar sign r-o-b-e-r-s-o-n 22 or you can also do it at paypal at paypal.me forward slash lee robertson that's paypal.me forward slash capital l-e-e-r-o-b-e-r-s-o-n or you can also do it at zelle at he shall cover me, all one word, at yahoo.com. That's he shall cover me at yahoo.com. H E S H A L L C O B E R M E at yahoo.com. Bless the man of God. And also the book, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven. You can go to his website and get it, but you can also get it on Amazon. But you have 
to get it. It is a necessity. You guys who are, you know me, I don't push books. I don't put it, I don't, I'm very careful. So if I'm doing it, you have to know it's true. You have to know it's real. And not only that, people who have gotten it have already seen results. I'm about results. I'm about yeah. really yielding fruit and results. You know, because most men of God, they don't want to bring somebody on their show who may have more revelation on me. More problem. I don't want to bring them on there because they're going to shine on me and make it like it's, it's all them. And like, what I care about the people that's watching. Hey, and there's a man of God that has actually equipped with some um, information and revelation that's going to bless you in the end times. I'm going to bring him on, Lord God, yeah. because he's blessing me. I don't know everything. <laughs> Please Come on. I sit back and learn from the man of God and take what he's given me <clears throat> and put it together with what the Lord's given me. And it's a great puzzle. I don't get jealous. There's too much of that stuff going on in the body of Christ. Come I on. elevate and lift up the man of God. I thank God for him and appreciate him. I've been praying for months for divine connections. And the Lord brought this man of God in my life. Wow. So who would I be to sit there being jealous and sitting there being, oh, oh my, my viewers like him. And they say, oh, they won't like me. Or that I won't. No, because I'm always trying to decrease and get out the way so y'all can see Jesus. Glory to God. But I want to do is bring men and women of God, men especially, to, to, to bless you. And this is one of them. There's no jealousy here. I'm so glad that I can bring. I want you guys equipped. I'm not trying to come on here and say, here's a great word. You go, whoa, that was a great word. I felt, I felt so good. Did you learn? Did you learn anything? I want come you on. to learn and be able to use it, but be equipped. The devil stands outside of churches all the time, waiting for you to go in there, doing your Holy Ghost dance, clapping, feeling good, doing your little shake or whatever, and coming out. The devil's saying, I've been waiting for you. Come you on learn, now. You didn't learn anything. That's what it's about. I want you to be taught and learn. And this this man of God has that fruit, has that to give to you. I'm bringing him on. No wow. jealousy, please. I'm. I encourage him. I, I I I applaud him. I thank God for him. I'm look. For, I want more men of God like that around me. That's yeah. what it's about. So I want Amen. you guys to know that. And I do mean this sincerely. Bless the man of God. Bless yeah. him. I appreciate him. Is there anything you want to say, Apostle? Before you before we um close out. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grace. You are my wife and I just just we just elated that we met you. Thank you so much, because when I was in the mountain, day 28. is when I realized how powerful this message was, day 28. And uh, I, I'm not I'm like you. I'm not I, I've never been seeking fame when I came to God. I never sought fame. I'm still not seeking fame. That's not one of my goals. My goal is I want to be the third person that, that announced that I finished my course. Mm. Jesus and Paul are the only two in the Bible that's recorded say they finished their course. I want to be, I want to say I finished. This book, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about this because I see the power of the blood. I never seen the blood before like this when I, until I went in the mountains. And I'm saying all your viewers, everyone that's watching, I beseech you with the mercies of God. Fellowship. If you fall, get right back up. In God, there's no failure. As long as you keep trying. There's no failure. If you break your fellowship, start back over. This is what I'm telling my kids all the time. But please give yourself to the fellowship and watch what happens. If you want to, if uh, we send out, we sign the books personally. I put a message in every book. If you want one, just go to my website, like Dr. Graves says, Sons of God, Sons of God and um, place your order there. Please make sure you put your, your address properly and your zip code, because we have trouble with a few of them that the zip code was wrong, the address was wrong. Good thing that the, um, the male lady here knows me very well, so she looks it up the place and she takes her time. So if you want a signed copy with a, a personalized message, I'd be happy to do that. Um, if you if you like prayer, you can email me, same address, Dr. Grave Gave. We'd be happy to pray for you. But most of all, I want to say thank you, Dr. Graves. I can't thank you enough. And we're looking forward. Uh, Dr. Graves is going to be with us next month. And uh, he's going to teach my people love him. I love him. I love his revelation. And he blessed the house and everybody's still talking about when he was with us. So we excited. And I tell you what, sons, um, um, sons of God, y'all gonna hear me say sons because I'm. Uh, it's a habit. I, I, I talk about sonship so much. If you can make that Texas, I, I can guarantee you the blood would not disappoint you. You're going to get what you came for. Again, thank all of you for receiving me. My wife, uh, I know she sends her love. 
Uh, we are grateful. Sons of God are grateful. And again, thank y'all for receiving me in Jesus' name. God bless. Thank you, Apostle. We appreciate it. And I want to say thank you to all those who are watching from Sons of God Embassy. Hello to you guys. Thank you for sharing your shepherd with us. We appreciate you and bless you all. Once again, you guys out there that are watching now and on the replay, give. Bless the man of God. Bless him. And get this one more time. One more time. Get the book. Get this book. Get Amen. this book. Get this book. Glory. Get it. Get it. Get it. Well, Dr. Greg must really like that book because he's not even showing his books. You're right. <laughs> it's all about this book here, the blood, and about the man of God, Apostle Lee Royce. I thank God for him. I thank you, man of God, for being here. And I'm looking forward Amen. to being with you next month. And the people should know that we're planning on also doing a book signing in Texas. So you yes. get that, yeah, get, get his book and bring it to Texas. So you can yes. get signed in person. Exactly. Glory to God. There yes. you go. Get two or three of them. I want to have a sign for my daughter and for my friend. Bring them, get them, bring them all. Glory to God to Texas. Okay. We appreciate you. We love you. I love you, man of God. Thank you for blessing us. This was so powerful. I'm going to be eating on this for a while. I'm going to send you the copy of it so you can post it if you want. I have to do to it. Yes. And, um, thank you to your to you and your and your thanks. Say hello to your precious wife. I appreciate you guys both. And just have a blessed Sabbath, uh, Sabbath day and a blessed week and the rest of the month. And I just want to say thank you, man of God. Yes. I so love you. So appreciate you. Amen. Amen. All right, you all. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the hour of uncovering. We'll be getting to the, uh, the, another one of the seven spirits of God, the spirit of grace, spirit of grace, mm -hmm. which all of these seven spirits, there's only one way you can have them, have them operating in your life. Only one way you can receive the anointing. And that's by the blood. blood. <laughs> no other way. There's no other way. That's why those, they're, they're mentioned in Revelation. Just, just for the end time, go to God. You want to get those operating in your life? You got to go through the blood. The blood of Buddha lamb. So see how the connection is? I'm teaching about seven spirits, but he's taught us how to fellowship with the blood. You see the connection, how God does this? <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Apostle, I love you. Tell your wife I said uh, hello you. and bless her too. And we'll I'll see you soon, next, next month. Yes, amen. Okay. <laughs>